along, runners have been asking the wrong question, which is what running shoes have the best support for my arches? We know that running shoes with arch support are really unfulfillable for helping to improve and sustain adequate foot arch strength and healthier, higher arches that are responsive and elastic. Put it this way, when your feet and arches are strong, you can certainly go a lot further when running and walking or even hiking. However, when you wear running shoes with arch support, the arch of your foot may be more underutilized with its capacity to make almost 30% elastic energy contributions, especially during running, which can help power your stride in a more energy efficient way. From an energetic standpoint, in arch supportive running shoes, you may be a long way of tapping into the elastic potential of the arch and your stride may be potentially energetically compromised to some degree. Another overarching concern is that aside from potentially robbing the arch of its full capacity to store plentiful amounts of elastic potential energy needed to help power an efficient running stride, it's also no secret and no surprise that arch support slows things down with respect to your arch's capacity to improve strength and function. It's because of this arch supportive running shoes have almost gained universal acclaim for contributing to collapsed or flattened arches that are mechanically fragile and too weak to handle normal weight bearing loads. And from this, we have become accustomed to rely on our supportive running shoes as a necessity to prevent our arches from buckling under normal pressure loads. Ultimately, instead of adding strength to the arch, running shoes with arch support takes the strength away simply by slowing the flow of muscular engagement within the arch. I'm certainly not the first one to make this connection. Lots of research has linked to a very clear understanding of how arch supported running shoes enormously undercuts foot health. In fact, subsequent research that I'm going to highlight right now is a dramatic example of how running shoes with strong arch supportive features stunts the foot's natural capacity to improve arch height and how these shoes drains out arch strength and function at an alarming rate. A 2013 study published in the Journal of Foot Ankle Research discovered that wearing running shoes with arch supportive features had immediate effects on diminishing arch height, whereby the researchers found that runners who wore arch supportive running shoes literally had reduced arch height immediately after a long run. The researchers found that arch supportive running shoes began to weaken the intrinsic musculature responsible for upholding the arch of the foot, which resulted in progressive arch collapsion almost instantaneously, which can cause a string of problems that snowballs up the leg during running, which I'll get to in just a moment. But ultimately, this piece of data is what I really want to underscore in that arch supportive running shoes appears to have very fast changing effects on your foot's arch height profile in that running shoes with arch support may erode arch health and arch strength as soon as you put the shoe on, resulting in a lowered arch than if you were to say adopt a more barefoot or minimalistic lifestyle. Not to mention these detrimental effects on foot health from wearing arch supportive running shoes extends way beyond weakening and collapsing the arches in that the researchers also found that running shoes with firm, stiff arch supportive structures led to weakened medial soft tissue compartments within the foot or the weakening of soft tissues in the middle part of the foot as well as weaken anti-pronatory muscles of the foot, which collectively the consequences of this becomes more pressing during running as weak pronatory muscles and weak medial soft tissue compartments in the foot may create a perfect storm of over or under pronatory complications that may have strong injurious implications. In simple terms, during running and walking, the foot naturally 
naturally relies on anti-pronatory muscles to promote and support controlled pronation, which helps rein in or tightly restrict over or under pronation, which essentially means excessive, unwanted, potentially harmful movements of the back of the foot or not enough movements at all to ensure adequate impact deflection or absorption. Essentially, anti-pronatory muscles in the foot really help stabilize unwanted, mechanically burdensome heel or rear foot movements during running and walking so you get better impact deflection, better stability, and a more firmly stable footstep. However, if your arches are too low due to abnormally weak, fragile, intrinsic muscles within the foot, too often, in the face of these weaknesses, the foot may move around way more than it really should during running in ways that may snowball, destabilizing vulnerabilities up the ankle, up the knee, thereby potentially increasing your risk of an ankle joint or a knee joint injury during running. The researchers found that the runners who had weak collapse flattened arches also had greater motions in the front part of the foot and displayed rapid side to side foot abduction during the stance phase of running, which means that the forefoot tilted or rapidly shifted too far inward more than normal during the stance phase of running, which could push the risk of injury even higher during running. Again, this was all attributed to the soft tissues of the medial aspect of the foot becoming weakened by arch supportive running shoes, whereby when the medial soft tissues in the foot are weak, they too often fail to act as natural stability reinforcements for over pronation during running. These natural pronatory stabilizers are less able to depress over pronation and may therefore result in a sizable increased risk in injury. Furthermore, to compound these problems, when these areas of the feet are weak, they may fatigue very quickly during running because when the feet are weak, they get tired much, much easier because they have lost the capacity to summon the resilience to effectively adapt to high physical demands. This is how foot fatigue may be more accelerated because your foot strength is essentially offline as a result of these types of shoes. Overall, the potential consequences of wearing arch-supported running shoes seem to be very clear and that arch-supported running shoes appear to be very closely aligned with the greatest acceleration in arch weakness, resulting in collapsed arches. The arches become less elastically and mechanically responsive on their own, which in all also spurs on the added problem of pipelining over pronation during running, which collectively may lead to a host of other mechanical problems up the kinetic chain of events up the leg during running, which ultimately questions the validity of the productive effectiveness of our supportive running shoes in their capacity to effectively reduce running related injuries. Knowing this data alone should launch a re-evaluation of how runners go about how they choose their footwear, whereby running shoes with arch support may be an obstacle to any kind of effort regarding sustained arch height and arch health. I think in this case, the answer to that is very self-evident in that long-term arch health and adequate arch height sustainability really does depend on the amount of reinforcing sensory stimuli pushing through the foot, getting the intrinsic musculature more re-engaged because essentially your foot strength needs to play catch up. And to that end, I think it may really help if you switch your focus to barefooting barefoot running, barefoot walking, barefoot hiking, because barefooting as a whole can really be a great equalizer in maximizing muscular engagement, especially the intrinsic musculature and soft tissue compartments deep within the foot. Going barefoot really does maximize the sensory resources that naturally brings so much muscle activity and muscular engagement within the foot on board Barefooting sets in motion natural stressors essential to directly stimulating the intrinsic muscles, revitalizing these muscles in ways that may help 
safeguard the arch from collapsing, the net effect of ongoing barefoot activity is usually stronger, higher, more elastic, healthier arches, which is going to have a profound effect on effectively bridging the gap between low arch height profile and over pronation, putting the foot in a stronger, more viable position where it can effectively get a firmer handle on limiting destabilizing over pronation during running and to do so with staying power, bringing pronation patterns of the rear foot to its proper place. Ultimately, you end up with feet that are more fully physically prepared to essentially handle the challenges of tough, hard training. This is ultimately why the opportunities to improve arch height profile are much more significant in the absence of external arch support simply because there is more transmission of stimulative engagement piercing through the foot, catalyzing robust changes in arch height for the positive. Barefoot running results in more integrated responses within the muscular framework of the foot that has a multiplier effect on a bolstering ankle strength, which is going to attract unshakable balance control and stability. Now I posted a link down below in the description box on a video that I did on the research pertaining to how exactly the sensory input acting on the bottoms of the barefoot is really the effective roots for bolstering foot strength and ankle strength. So if you struggle with putting yourself on a stronger foothold during running, perhaps your top priorities should be consistent with keeping the intrinsic muscles within the foot fully awake and fully engaged. And to do so, you really need to tap into the sensory energy and tactile stimulation via barefooting to breathe new life into your arches because the sensory components of barefooting are very crucial elements in exercising the intrinsic musculature that help maintain a strong, responsive, higher arch, eventually giving your foot the muscular and mechanical tools it really needs to protect itself, which is going to make a big difference in your injury prevention efforts. For more information on the health and performance benefits of barefoot running as well as minimalist running, please subscribe to my YouTube channel where you will also stay more up to date on the latest regarding the hot button topic, forefoot running versus heel strike running. And lastly, follow me on social media. I'd love to connect with you. And I provided all of those links down below in the description box. Thank you so much for listening and watching. Have fun out there on the roads and trails. Bye for now.